manufacturers and the NEC recommendations. So when you get the both drop considerations, we talk about that ANSI standard, ANSI 4, something you guys told me what that number was. And we found out that the ANSI standard says that for utilization equipment, they don't want that voltage to be less than 10% and not more than 5%. And that's based on nominal system voltage. So we're going to be working everything off a of nominal system voltage. We're not going to worry about what the rating of the equipment is. So according to 110.3b in the NEC, equipment must be installed and used in accordance with the manufacturer's instructions, including the listing or labeling. For this reason, circuit conductors equipment must be sized in accordance with the manufacturer's requirements. So the ANSI standard is incorporated within the standard of the product that tells you what you have to do. Um, Brian, one time I was working on some things, and Brian, you were telling me that the maximum voltage drop on an electronic ballast was 108 volts. The, the minimum voltage. The minimum voltage. Was 108. Okay. 108. The minimum volt, 108 volts. And it kind of surprised me, and I'm trying to figure out, well, how do you come up with 108 volts? But we did a calculation. If you had 120 volt nominal, and the ANSI standard says no more than 10% voltage drop, that means that the operating voltage is going to be at 90% of the nominal system voltage. So 90% of 120 comes out to be what? 108. 108. So just to understand it. So this is a manufacturer requirement. My point is this. The National Dakota does have a voltage drop requirement. It's contained in 110.3b that you have to comply with the manufacturer's instructions. You follow me? Yes. Right, Mario, you're, you're, you're giving me a first yes. Time I, first time I, I've, I've heard it, that's why. But, but am I right? I, yes, you're right. You have, you have to, to make sure. The and the manufacturers, they, are there, they, they have to have a certain amount of voltage given to the equipment. If not, the equipment was never designed for some voltage. Listen, you have electronic ballasts and it's designed to operate at 108, and you put it less than 108, well, you better know that. Now, I don't know whether they always mark the minimum, maximum, but we saw the air conditioner. Remember the air conditioner gave us that range and the right. air conditioner nameplate? So maybe we'll get lucky. So if a piece of equipment gives you the minimum operating voltage and we know what the serving voltage is to begin with, right? Well, then we can figure out the voltage drop, the wire, because the wire is a function that's going to affect how much voltage. Then we can figure out what size wire would you have to have to make sure we can supply that equipment to the equipment rating. If the equipment does not tell you what it's rating, it's just not displayed, well, then we know we're going to go to the nominal system voltage at 90%. So if it was 240, 90% of 240 is what, 216 or something like that? 108 times 2? 260. 16. 260. 240 and 90% is 216. Mm, so you're saying it's more? You can have a... 216. 216. 216. Oh, we're both saying the same yeah, thing? Yeah, okay. we're saying the same thing. <laughs> Make sure. <laughs> okay. I thought I thought you were saying 60. Okay, 216. Brian, you were going to say something. Yeah, I, I was going to just say that I think Mario kind of, you know, set back when you said the NEC has a voltage drop requirement because we, in our, because of our trade and what we hear and what people say, we're always thinking like a percent this, a percent that. And, and I think really... What clicked for me was, yeah, there's a voltage drop requirement that you can't go below the minimum voltage. And I think that's what kind of took, put it into context for me. So you're just thinking about, hey, there's a minimum voltage that a piece of equipment needs to operate. And the voltage drop requirement in the NEC says, don't go below that minimum voltage, whatever that happens to be. Not necessarily thinking about the 3% and the 3%, the 5%, all these other things. Okay. I'm just trying to establish... A concept, right? I'm just doing an introduction to voltage drop. But the reason we're concerned about voltage drop is because the manufacturers have to have a minimum operating voltage at their equipment. We know what the nominal system voltage is going to be. The code requires us to make sure we comply with the manufacturer's instructions. Just making that statement. So let me read this again. Okay, we go on the next slide. Now, there's an ANSI C84.1 voltage rating of equipment, and we discussed this. We didn't actually have the ANSI reference there. Remember that? Eric, you read it. Mario, you started talking. I think you had more of a summary, and Eric, you had the standard. And then we talked about that. So if it's okay with you, looking at the slide, we've already covered this. 90% for the manufacturers, for the code. That's a code requirement. Equipment minimum voltage example. So what's the minimum voltage as an example? 
the minimum voltage and utilization equipment must not be less than 90. I'm making a statement in the question, so you can't possibly get this wrong, okay? I'm making a statement. It cannot be less than 90% of the nominal system voltage, because that's the answer, C84.1. What's the minimum operating voltage for a 115 volt rated connected load to a 120 volt source? And Brian is like, I don't understand, why are you putting this rating of the load in there? Well, there's other standards that manufacturers themselves have to mark on their equipment. They have to mark the voltage rating of equipment. Now, things are changing dramatically, so we don't know if this is to be the case today. But I'm pretty comfortable that most equipment is like your air handlers. Um, not maybe air handlers. I mean, probably most equipment is going to be marked 115, 230. Remember the motors when we we're covering motors? You look at the columns. There are 115 motors, 230-volt motors, 460-volt motors. So there's, there's standards for manufacturers to say, okay, we're going to figure this to be a 115-volt circuit because they recognize there's voltage drop coming in. They're not worried about the nominal system voltage. But when we're doing voltage drop calculations, we're not concerned about what the equipment is rated. I don't care that it's rated 115 because this voltage, minimum voltage, is on the ANSI standard. Let me go back here. I'll read it. That is based on the nominal system voltage. So we don't look at the equipment voltage. We look at nominal system voltage. It needs 90% of 120 or whatever the voltage might be. So in this case here, well, you need 90% of 120, and it comes out to be 108. How about another one? Again, forgetting about the rating of the equipment, if it's connected to a nominal, two, assuming it's rated 208 and it's connected to 208, well, then the, the nominal system voltage is 208, and 90% of that. It's going to be 187.2. You comfortable with that, Mario? I, I, I'm watching Mario, <laughs> and Mario is like, you're taking me someplace that because my whole career is voltage drop was 3% and 5%. Yep, and yep. I'm just talking requirements of the code. And energy not the conservation code and not, all these not other kinds of things. Code, not informational notes. I'm simply saying no matter what we have to do, we better make sure the equipment has its operating voltage. That's all I'm saying. Yeah. Take a deep breath, Mario. Okay, here's another one. What's 90% of 230? Uh, okay, see? Mm. It's a 230-volt rated piece of equipment, but it's all based on nominal. I almost messed up myself. It's 90% of 240, 216. Okay? These are simple questions. Equipment volt drop example. So let's work out an example now. The minimum voltage at utilization equipment must not be less than 90% of the nominal system voltage What's the maximum permitted voltage drop then for a 115 volt rated load connected to a 120 volt circuit? Well, now it's not 90% of the voltage. Well, you could say 90% minus 100%, you know, or you can just simply say, well, it's a 10% voltage drop. So I'm gonna go with a 10% voltage drop. But that's where Mario, you, you might be a little stunned and it's like, <clears throat> what do you mean? 10% voltage drop because all my life I was taught 3% for the feeders, maximum 3% for the branch, 5% overall, 310, not 19, A, note, A1, note 3, 215, that 2, probably note 1. And we're not talking about a recommendation by the code, which is irrelevant. We're talking about a fact that that equipment can have a, cannot have more than a 9% voltage drop from the nominal system voltage, Mario. So with this new information, taking it into the real world. This is the real world. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. All right. What do you no, think no, no, I... real world application. Okay. Okay. You know, voltage fluctuates with the load, with the utility loading and all that. In the real world, do I use the voltage that I have nope. or I use nominal the voltage? The voltage drop is simple. You don't know what the bolt is going to be. There's no way to verify any of that. Right. The equipment is going to be 90% up 240. And when we're working out examples, because that voltage could be 252 coming in from the utility, it could be less, so there's no way. I mean, this thing is such a moving object. I mean, you know, a subject. It, it, so what you would do is you're just going to take, we're going to work it out as we go along. <laughs> okay. Okay. But okay. right now we want to just establish that it's, it's a 12 volt drop. It's a 12 volt drop. Normally people would take it 120, and they would have taken maybe 5% of 120, and they would have said the maximum bolt strap would have been what? Uh, 5%. 5%. Right? 6 volts. 6, Six volts. volts. Six well, volts. no, it's, it's a 10%. So everything you've been doing on a bolt strap, nothing has changed. The only difference is that 
The manufacturers, you're going to have to make sure that you're going to work with maximum 10%. And if you want to work anything else, then you'd work something else. So we haven't changed our method. All right, 208 load, what is the maximum volt strap on a 208 volt load? Well, it's going to be 10% of 208. I would use 20.8, not my 5%, I'm sorry. 208, not my 5% for the equipment, for this purpose, for the real world. And the reason I'm bringing this out to you is because sometimes you're trying to use a code recommendation of 3% or a 5%. You're gonna, Brian, we did the motor we found out that that voltage dropped. Oh, here's another thing. Remember that motor application? We did it and we got the answers. We thought, well, you know, the voltage drop is this, but that's because the motor wasn't running, right? What happens when the motor's running? What happens to the temperature of the wire? It doesn't. It goes you up. would think it would go up, right? Yeah. Which means when the temperature wire goes up, the result is going to be what? More of a voltage drop. We ran that sucker for like four or five hours, and we went out there to find out what the voltage changed. You know what happened? It went up. I'm like, what? I thought if I ran the motor for three hours or more or something, heat up the wires in the raceway, raise up that temperature coefficient, both voltage would go down. Apparently, utility must have, they, they elevated their voltage. And the, if you think about this, Eric, you have wires in a pipe in the ground carrying current. You think there might be some heat sinking taking place? And the wires probably will never, ever, ever get hot <laughs> in reality because you have that ambient temperature in a building, in an air conditioning building, and we're assuming that the wires are going to get out. But well, they, they really didn't get out at all. So back to here. All right, another example. 230, low rated 240 volt, nominal system volt. What's the maximum volt drop? Well, 10%. Mario nodded his head. He's starting to get a little bit more comfortable. Okay. I'm just beginning to realize, hey, I could use a smaller wire now. It's well, okay. you, you, you're going to use a wire to make sure that that equipment is operating at its maximum. Voltage. At its voltage. And there are applications where you try to comply with a 3% voltage drop, you're going to run some wire that is going to be astronomically large, and it serves absolutely no purpose because the manufacturers have a requirement. The code about the 3% and 5% probably came from the copper development guys, you know what I mean, or, or the <laughs> aluminum guys. Somebody who's trying to sell copper or trying to sell aluminum, trying to sell more wire. Maybe the steel guys got embedded with the copper guys. Well, because if you have to have bigger wire, well, they need bigger pipes and... And everybody's happy with the 3% and the 5%. And where did 3% and 5% of code come from anyhow? It's just a, a random number. I want you to know that the manufacturers have to have a minimum voltage and what the minimum voltage is. Okay, energy consideration. This is facts. Current flowing in a conductor results in energy losses in the conductor due to heat, right? You carry, carry current and you have resistance and it's going to be I squared R losses. You take the current squared times the resistance. Well, they heat it up. That's just a fact. So the energy code, so some building codes adopt an energy code that applies a maximum conductor voltage drop. And I shouldn't say typically for lighting loads, Brian. Go ahead and remove that. Um, somebody told me that, and, I, and as I check more and more, it does not say that. So, Mario, you showed me the Florida building code. Yep. yep. And it said the maximum voltage drop was what percent? 5%. Okay, well, that's a building code. Okay. That's not a national code. That's just a building code standard. Now, if you size it at 5%, now here's what I do, what I would do if I'm going to size it in the real world. I know the codes, it's 10% it's for the feeders and the branch circuit. Is that right? I mean, I have to go from the service, from the nominal system voltage. Well, the feeders are going to have a certain amount of voltage drop. And since the information on note 215.2, note 1, talks about 3% for the feeders and 3% uh, for the feeders and 2% for the branch and 5% overall, I just said in my app, I'm going to figure the feeder to be 3%. If I figure the feeder to be 3%, and since I'm working out branch circuit examples, then I'm going to figure the branch circuit to be at what? 7%. So that's what I'm going to work here. Now... In the building code, they're giving you a maximum volt strap of 5%. And I said, okay, uh, then you wouldn't want to use my app as far as distance is concerned. I'll tell you how far you can run it because my mind based upon code, not some about energy code. I said, Mario, do you ever see these calculations down on the plans? No. Rarely. No. Never. Never. <laughs> Mario. Anybody ever, how could you enforce it? How could you take every single branch circuit in a building and validate that every single circuit, because it's a function of the actual load. Is that right? 
It's not a function of a calculated load, and it's not a function of because you put a 200 amp feeder to a 200 amp panel that you now have to limit that to 5% to 200 amperes or 180. You follow what I'm saying? There's no way to know this. There's no way. But somebody could catch and say, well, you know what? You already put that in there, and I don't know if you actually did it correct or not. Well, here's what you do. You go to the end and you measure the voltage. You go to the beginning, and then you do what? You measure the voltage. And you probably will find out that you're not going to exceed the 5% in reality if somebody was going to do that. Because it also, and you make sure all the lights are off. <laughs> <laughs> In the building, <laughs> <laughs> or whatever it is. So when it comes to the energy code, here's how the industry handles that. We all recognize that's just a bunch of crap, that you can't possibly design a building and figure every single circuit in any way to size the wire, because if you did that, you'll find out you can't even run probably 100 feet to supply a lighting circuit. Not even, uh, even 100 feet, it's, it's an impossibility. So the way the industry works is this. You put a building code requirement and it has a checkbox. Check, we covered the energy code. The actual world is that nobody in the world is ever gonna calculate every single circuit with the energy code. So I'm done with that energy code deal. So I'm not doing any energy code calculations. Now, if somebody is actually doing the energy code calculations, well, then they're gonna use 5%, then, then, then do it but I'm making sure it's safe. Boyd? So electrical engineers sometimes get around this by they'll draw right on the plans or the specs. If you go X amount of feet in this voltage, you've got to upsize your wire this size. Then you're well, hold on, hold on, hold on. <clears throat> the Specs are not <clears throat> part of the building plan, but no, that would be not. something that you would do. So you're saying sometimes, but that's unrelated to this conversation. Correct. You're just saying, say, hey, listen, careful when you do a job. Yep that the specifications might specify your wire sizing, and, but that's nothing to do with voltage drop. That's just specs saying more than 100 feet, the size wire, so then we gotta be aware of specifications. Brian. Well, and, and I, I agree that's a, a big pitfall, and then I would just say that you should actually be so familiar with the code and what the code requires that you're checking those specifications, and we've all had these conversations at, at meals because the specifications are frequently wrong. And it's okay to point that out. Well, I don't know if every single circuit in a job that has specifications is actually complied with. Every single circuit. You know what I'm saying? So I don't know. I'm just saying is people have a tendency to say, well, the energy code says 5%, and you have this over here. Now, one other thing you got to be watching for, it's not voltage drop, but it's related. Sometimes the instructions of the equipment will tell you the size wire for the equipment. Yep. This is not related to voltage drop, but it really is. But it's not related to voltage drop. This thing says if you have this air handler unit or this condenser, that if you go <coughs> up to 65 feet, we want you to use an 8 gauge wire. And if you go up to 100 and something feet, we want you to use a 6 gauge wire. Low and if voltage you go over wire here, lighting. I'm sorry? Low voltage lighting is very, very prominent like that. And low voltage lighting. Your, yep. your light, lighting that you're going to put outside yep. or inside of a yep. building, they'll tell you the size wire. So don't misunderstand me. I'm going into calculations. But the calculations are for the purpose of sizing the conductors. Specifications, it's related to volt strap, but there's no calculation. The instructions, it's related to volt strap, but it's not a calculation. So we have to comply with the specification, have to comply with the instructions, but we have to comply with the code. And the code tells us you have to comply with 110.3b, manufacturing instructions, what are those? The energy code, whatever those energy people that want to design it, and they'll just put on the plans, saying that it complies, what is what are the, the stamp or however it's written out? Complies with the energy complies code. Complies with the energy code. Done. So everybody's happy because plans examiners should be aware that you can't possibly check a job because you don't actually know what the load is on those circuits. Yeah. Right. Yeah. This is just theoretical numbers. Okay? All right. So that's what I'm going to do with the energy code. Fire pump installations. I had a question, streamers, hey, what about fire pump installations? We mentioned fire pump installations when we were doing fire pump conductor sizing uh, in the previous unit. There's no problem in sizing a conductor to a fire pump motor. How do you size a conductor to a fire pump motor? Like a regular motor. Yeah, and it's going to be what? 125%. 125% of the motor FLC, you go to table three phase, pipe three phase, bump, 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 we're done. Then you go to table 3, 10, 16, 75 degrees C gallon, bump. How do you size the short circuit protection? Locked rotor current. Locked rotor current. 
Not fire pump, Mario. Yeah, right. Sorry. Lock rotor current. We make sure it's above the starting current. Make sure that no matter what happens, it's going to be above the lock rotor current. And guess what? And it will only open in the event of a short circuit ground fault because the motor had lock rotor. It locked up. Current went up. Didn't trip the protection device. It heats up the windings, shorts out the windings. Then we get in the short circuit and then we clear it. Okay, we're done. But both the drop is, a, is an important consideration. And uh, guys, do me a favor. Go to 695. Dot seven, because I'd like to have a conversation about it, but I'm not going to actually do any any calculations. Okay. Sorry about that. Uh, no, Mario, 695.7. Sure. There's, is there an A? There's an A and a B. Okay, what is A about? Okay, 695.7 is A. A, starting. The voltage at the fire pump controller line terminals shall not drop more than 50%, 15% below normal under motor starting conditions. Okay, so it's a voltage drop at where? The terminals, the line terminals. Of what? No, not, no, Mario, you can't talk general like that. Of the fire pump controller. A controller. Yes. Okay, not line terminals, just, just the fire pump. So therefore, the controller, what is a controller? What's a fire pump controller? What does it look like? I mean, I mean... Usually a, a big red big box. box. Big red box. Big box. Right. Is there like a contactor that turns on and off? Right? Is that how it turns on? There's, you know, yep. There's a, there's, yep. a controller. controller. Article 100 defines a controller. Yep. Those that are watching this videotape, those you have this opportunity, you put it on pause. Every opportunity you have when I'm recording, when you're watching me, and I tell you, Article 100, take a look at this rule. You put it on pause. You go back to Article 100. You see, we're talking in a language that we're not using slang. We're talking in a language that, that meets the terms that we should be talking about. So when we say a controller, that's a make and break contact, that's turning it on and off. So at that controller, which is making break on, the maximum voltage drop should not be any greater than 15%. But see, it had to do with starting currents. And Eric, just if you could just briefly tell us what happens with starting currents and, and wire sizing in a real large way, then why we can't do it in this classroom without having software or something? <laughs> yeah, that's a good question. Now, <clears throat> when a motor starts, excuse me, <clears throat> when a motor starts, you have an inrush, which might be six times the, uh, but for a fire pump, it's, it's of course on the nameplate. And so when the motor starts, uh, the characteristics of the entire circuit change because the power factor goes way down to about 30. Why does the power factor go <clears throat> down? The power factor goes down because when the motor starts, it's creating a large magnetic field. And so it is, uh, it's what we call reactive current. Okay, and stop right there. Guys, remember, the motor starts, and I said that it starts at almost at a short circuit. Yep. Remember that? Well, it means the current is so high, what happens? A large magnetic field. And then as it starts running, the current goes down, and then it gets into the running current. Remember that? Well, that means the magnetic field is not going to be as large. But when it's starting, really starting, that causes the, the, a, a change between the voltage waveform and the current waveform, and inductive reactance, and it causes a power factor. And what's the effect of that power factor? <laughs> on the it, well, it shifts the voltage out of phase with the current, and you can almost, you can think of it as uh, parallel paths almost to where you have normal current flowing, then you have reactive current flowing, you've got resistance on the conductors, you have reactance, and so there's a portion that flows on, on uh, depending on the power factor. And so uh, if, you if you don't use the chapter nine, table nine voltage Hold drop on. equation. Let's go to chapter nine. Table nine, where nope. Eric was twitching when I was saying, I need you to cross this out. So it's chapter nine, table nine. Eric, on chapter nine, <coughs> table nine, which of these columns would you use or engineering people would use for the fire pump starting? The, okay, so if, is Brian going to bring up oh, the... We'll get that uh, up. So while he's working nine, up, just, just well, talk. Okay, so, so there is the X column that you crossed out, which What's is reactants. Where's X? Which X? On the left-hand side. The, on the left-hand side. That's, that's right. reactants. No, no, Brian, left. Go. Yeah, I was trying to get it a little bit. <laughs> I see what you're saying. 
Okay, zoom in, Brian. All the way, zoom in. So, okay, that, that's reactants. We're not going to get into it. Right. But if we're going to go to the different wiring, steel or aluminum, basically free right. air or metal conduit. Okay. And then you're going to use the AC resistance, which is R. So, so we're going to get the reactants. Right. Okay. Then, by the way, in, in, impedance is a function of, of uh, let's see, it's, it's reactance squared plus. And resistance. And resistance, AC resistance squared and square rooted of it. Okay, so there's, there's a relation between reactance and resistance. Okay, go ahead. So now, Brian, if you would please, go down to note two at the bottom of the table. And so, you know, Mike, you're talking about Ohm's law. E is equal to I times R. Right. Well, in this case, the R is that equation, effective Z, which is, and I'll just read it, R cosine theta plus X sine theta. Cosine theta is the power factor. You can just replace that with power factor. And so you just plug the R and X from the equation, from, from the table, right. and your power factor into that equation, and that's how you calculate your voltage drop. Well, that's going to give you your impedance. That's going to give you your impedance. And then once we know the impedance... Where are you, Brian? Okay. Once we know the impedance, well, that... Well, E is equal to I times R. E is equal, well, to, really, I e is equal to I times Z because we're e is not equal working to I times Z, Z because reactants. And but, that, but one second. <clears throat> he said that equation, that note two equation, you had to know the power factor. Right. And it's not like something like, well, I don't know, let's figure a 14. No, 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 no. That's why this is not done by the electrician. This is not done by somebody who's not qualified to understand the factors. I have a spreadsheet that has the reactance, the AC resistance, it has the power factor, and it shows you the effect, and it shows you how you would size the wire. And it's surprisingly that in most cases, this does not cause you to put a bigger wire. And it actually, if you don't use this method, you will put in a bigger wire. Right. <clears throat> yeah, so here's what he said. If you actually size it like you would normally, your wire size, and I don't want to say absolute, but probably almost every single case, it will be enough. But you can't go with 15% voltage drop like we would normally do a voltage drop and work it out because you're not, you're not, you're not dealing with the reactants, you're not dealing with the power factor. So I'm going to stop there so that we are not going to be talking about power factor and fire pump controllers and motors because that's an industry. Yep. Now let's go over to the, uh, and that was it. And that was, uh, and the starting current, Mario, I think was talking about uh, 5% of the running voltage, I think is what it was saying, and, and 695.7. <clears throat> yeah, the language says. On B? On B is 5% below the right. For the running current. For the running. Yeah. So don't do fire pumps and do any calculations with fire pumps without knowing the reactant. Well, you know the reactants and the impedance. You just have to know what the power factor is, and then we work, and then you know what you're doing there. Okay, I'm done with that. Okay, so now let's go to the Nash Electric Code. Some, this is the way, Mario, that we've all done bolts drop. We've, we've always considered it. We go to 210.19a, note three for branch circuits, 215.2a1, note two for feeder circuits, and what it says is the maximum, where's the maximum here, overall? Do I have to show it here? Yep, with the oh, here we go. The max overall voltage drop for the feeder and the branch circuit should not exceed 5% recommendation, and the maximum that should be on the feeder should not exceed 3%, and the max on the branch circuit should not exceed 3%, which means you can put 3%, 2%, 2%, 3%, 3%, you can put 2.5%, 2.5%, any combination you want to, as long as the maximum does not. And so what we've done as an industry and what we work at, we just simply say, okay, we're going to assume that the feeder is 2%, and then we're going to work all branch circuits at 3%. That's just what we've done, which is okay. If you're taking a test, this is how you answer the questions in an exam. Okay, you don't get in there and say, well, you know, ANSI C81, not that one. 90%. You know, 90%. You know. Okay, so we're now going to go into how would you take a test, how do you do the answers. Okay, branch circuit, an example. The NEC recommendation, the minimum voltage utilization equipment should not be less than 95% of the nominal system voltage for both feeders and branch circuits. What's the minimum recommended operating voltage for a 115 volt rated load connected to 120? The rating of the loads are irrelevant. We never get involved with those. So you're gonna to have to make sure you have a 95% of that voltage. And it'd be what? Well, it's a six volt drop, but I mean, what's the operating voltage? 114. 114. 114. 
Okay, how about 95% of 208? Without having to read the question, go to all the details. Well, you need to have 197.6. Okay. How about the minimum voltage at a 240 volt load? Well, 95% of 240, you need to have 228. 